a little shine, Ralph. <laughs> Good evening tonight, and welcome to the meeting of the Curriculum and Instruction Committee. I'm Mary Ellen Flaherty Ludwig on the board and a new chair of this committee. Tonight, we're going to be looking at um, some programs of study. Should I start it again? Or is it? It's good. Um, but uh, first, I would like to introduce some other board members. Um, Colin Hostin is here, and Erica De Palma. Uh, Rob Pennington is going to um, introduce his team. And as I said, the uh, topic is program of study in high school. All right. Good evening, everyone. Rob Pennington. Really excited tonight. Our high schools have been working diligently over the last month to prepare for the upcoming program of study. And we have new proposals to share tonight with the Board of Education. We have a large contingent of our high school team and curriculum instruction team that will be sharing some of our new course proposals. And I am going to introduce a few members of the team. And I, I'm just gonna try and introduce every single person and here we go. So we have Stacy Bergen, who is our education administrator for curriculum professional development. We have Ralph Valenzizi, assistant superintendent of digital learning. We have Kyle Heeslip, who is the assistant principal at Norwalk High School. We have Shirley Ethier, who is an assistant principal at Brian McMahon. We have Victor Black, who is principal of PTEC. And I believe that we have Beth Fanari here as well as the assistant principal <laughs> at PTEC. Um, we have Misty Hofer, assistant educational administrator for STEM. We have Sarah Zawowski, who is our director of our Future Ready programs. We have Carol Wushire toth who's the Workforce Development Manager. And I see Dr. Moore, Principal of Norwalk High as well. So we have a full slate of people who will be sharing information this evening. We're very excited to share our proposals for the program, the future program of study. Wow, that was a lot. All right, here we go. I'm going to share my screen so that we can get started. And just confirming that everyone can see the slideshow. We can see Wonderful. it. Wonderful. Yes, I can see it. Great. So tonight's purpose is really to look at the course selection process. We're going to look at the graduation requirements. Now, the graduation requirements changed last year that we added the capstone course. And this year, it will be the same. So that will be a quick just resharing what our course requirements are. We will then go through the new course proposals. PTEC will provide updates around their new pathways and courses that they are proposing and our future ready programs. Even though it started this year, we, we wanna make sure that in the program of study, it is highlighted which we did not add into the program of study last year. So this year we are making sure that that program is added into our program of study. All right, with that, I am going to turn it over to Kyle Heeslip, uh, the assistant principal from Norwalk High. Thank you, Kyle. Yep. So our next uh, section is on the course selection process. And this uh, involves all staff members at our school, um, teachers, counselors. Um, throughout the month of February, it's a big month. We distribute the program of studies to families, to staff members, um, just to make sure that everyone knows what courses are being offered for the next year. Um, within February as well, through Power School, we offer uh, course recommendations. Uh, so the teachers conference with the students right before February break, it's about at three A days, three B days. And um, for both of those days, they go over any of their recommendations for their classes uh, within the department. So science teachers um, will recommend students to different science courses. 
math teachers will recommend uh, students in math courses and so on. Um, after February break, that's where the school counselors come into play and they meet with students individually one-on-one -on -one, um, to select courses. So they select courses based off of um, the requirements throughout this, the year and the minimum requirements based on the grade level itself. Um, so the month of February, the students can submit their course requests um, along with February and March where the counselors meet with them. And then uh, the course requests are then tallied and that's where we build our schedule um, for the following year. So we take a look at the amount of students that were um, requested for each of the courses. And then when we look at teacher assignments and teachers uh, and staffing, um, we wanna make sure that we have enough staff and we then propose it to, to Rob um, and to also the admins, um, whether we need to hire new staff or whether we need to change certain things. Um, so in April, May, that's when we really build our schedule itself, but the heavy lifting process starts this upcoming February and March. All right. Thanks, Rob. Nope, thank you. So these are the graduation requirements that we, uh, that we have. Now, I do want to highlight that we have 11 credits in humanities. We have nine credits in STEM. The state requirement is nine credits in humanities and nine credits in STEM. We have the two PE and health credits. We have three pathway related credits. And then we have our capstone requirement, which is one credit. We have 26 total credits that our students are required for graduation. And we're, we're very excited because as at the state level, they offer, it's a 25 credit requirement. So we are definitely meeting um, the state, but also beyond that. So when we talk about providing opportunities for our children. All right, so now we're gonna transition into our new course proposals. And for the STEM courses, we have Misty Hofer, who is going to share about the work that the STEM department is proposing at the different schools. Misty, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Rob. So uh, we have electives that the schools have put together at Norak High. They are working to build up some additional courses to support a hopeful future sports pathway. They have created two uh, courses that will fulfill that aspect. One is sports statistics, which is a mathematical course, and another is sports science, which is a science course. Sports statistics will do some analytics. It's become very popular with college level classes to do sports analytics. So this should hopefully prepare students and allow them to put and apply some mathematical knowledge as they are engaging in some real world skills. With sports science, it's very similar. They'll look at how the body reacts in terms of biology and physiology and how that's put to use in terms of sports. At Brian McMahon, they're offering two new courses, also both electives. One is a forensics beyond the grave, which really looks at a few key areas of forensics. They have another forensics course. This will extend the learning and students will be able to take two courses in forensics instead of just one. Also at Brian McMahon, they're, they're suggesting a new course which will complete their marine science pathway. They have begun building that up in years prior. This is for 12th graders and it's the second year of their IB marine science. We have CGS who's also proposing another elective honors logical reasoning. We're very excited to support our schools because electives um, and STEM is, is um, when students finish with the core, we want them to continue with math and science to really fulfill those requirements. And a lot of students are very excited about it. So being able to give some additional choices is wonderful. Misty, if I could just ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, are, is your position that you interact with all of these high schools or are you located in one of the high schools? I'm central, I'm central office located. So I work with the department chairs and with the administrators at the high schools to support them. But whenever they propose a new course, it's done so they think it up. I connect with them. If there's anything that I want strengthened, I suggest to them some areas to strengthen. And it's really a collaborative effort. 
I see. Okay, that's very helpful. So that and and, and wonderful too that uh, all of the high schools get a chance to uh, do something that that uh, that's in STEM. And uh, I'm just uh, taking a look at. Is there one missing? Oh well, we're going to be looking at P Tech pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that, that will be missing nothing for Sam. Yes, <laughs> I get it. Continue. And, and Are there just, any other questions? I just wanted to add that you can find the pages that all of these new courses are located in the program of study. They're all located page 58, 71. So you can find them. I did want to provide uh, Jen Sfiro an opportunity, the assistant principal at CGS, if she wanted to add anything to the honors logical reasoning course. Well, since I didn't get introduced before. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, you were fine. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Well, no, it's all good. Um, nope, just the honors logical reasoning course is really unique in that it's um, it kind of spans both, you know, inductive, deductive reasoning, kind of the AP Lang um, kind of, um, sorry, so now, now suddenly I'm speechless. Um, take some of what is explored a little bit in AP Lang, but through the math lens and also looks at how um, logical reasoning varies across cultures and you know the way that those things are processed so it's a really cool um interdisciplinary look at um logical reasoning basically all right well thank you very much and i do apologize and, uh, uh, are these rob are these all full year courses no they're they're not full year courses they're a lot all of semester they're all semester. They're all semester. Courses. Okay. And um, I'm sorry to just jump back one slide. Um, eighth graders, how are, can you just go through how that, how they're educated on the electives that they could take and the courses that they can take as part of, yes, the slide slide four. And I'm sorry, Erica, I misspoke. They're not all electives. Most are IB Marine, Marine Science year two is a full year course. Got it. Thanks. Kyle, would you like to share a little bit about um, the how the schools go to the middle schools and share about this process? Sure. So we we meet with the middle school counselors. There's one selected for eighth graders at Nathan uh, for Nora Kide for Nathan Hale and for West Rocks, and then obviously at Ponis and Roten and uh, CMS. And um, each of the different counselors then are provided the same program of studies, and we yeah, for. Uh, Nor uh, Norwalk High, we provide Nathan Hale and we provide West Rocks, um, the potential courses for English, for math, for social studies and science. Every single student is, is put into one of those courses based off of um, whichever course that they choose from. Um, so they always have a core four class. And then they will also have a world language class as well. So that would be their fifth credit that they take. And then we do uh, try to get as many students in ninth grade into physical education and health education one, which would fulfill then their six credits there. Um, the other two then credits can be a pathway of some sort. So there's a lot of students that take theater studies. Um, there's a lot of students that would take um, potentially like uh, drone engineering. Um, there's a couple of students that might be interested in a different physical education class called like aquatic fundamentals. Um, if they are interested in a DMCA pathway, they would take the DMCA course as the initial credit itself. Um, so ideally, ninth graders coming in would take up to about two credits of elective credits their freshman year. Um, the only students that wouldn't would be students that might have a, a IEP, and those students might have to uh, be in a specialized course um, where they might have to take one credit instead of two of an elective course for their freshman year. And as we embark on the, the choice school um, lottery system where we could have kids at Mason Hale going to Brian McMahon at a higher percentage than they have previously, will the counselors also be educated on what is available at CGS and Brian McMahon for those particular students? We can definitely do that for sure. Yeah, our, our, ho our hope is to really, as this process, Brian McMahon would go really to PONUS Roten and CMS and Norwalk High would 
uh, primarily go to Nathan Hale, West Rocks, and CMS. Now we have to be make those visits to all of the schools because there are more opportunities for students to go to different programs, i.e. you're going to hear at Norwalk High, they're developing their theater program into this full-on pathway. And this year they're proposing two uh, new courses for consideration to continue to get students excited about that pathway. And so we may have students from Ponus and Roten who are interested in that pathway, but if they don't know about it, then they wouldn't. So we will be sharing the all of the different programs and pathways across our high schools. Great. Uh, Thank you. Rob, uh, just to continue on Erica's question, uh, Rob, or oh, are we only are we uh, we're, we're sending the high school people out to the middle schools? Do we give the middle school students an opportunity to go to the high schools to see uh, uh, classes in action? So I know that elementary schools will go to middle schools um, in terms of visiting schools. I know that we have had. We have events like Dr. Moore has an event coming up. Is it this Thursday, Dr. Moore? Would you like to share a little bit about the event for families? Yes, we have our choice fair Thursday and we'll have a presentation in the auditorium uh, briefly. And then uh, right now we have 164 uh, who have signed up through Sign Up Genius to attend. So we will have student groups uh, lead tours to those particular uh, areas of the school where we have our choice programs. But at the high school, we do have eighth graders come up uh, to visit. Uh, it's usually in the evening, not during the school day where they can actually go into classrooms but they do start with the tour around the building, uh, meeting with the parents uh, in the auditorium. Rob, if I could just jump in too, um, we host several open houses at CGS throughout the year. Um, most are either on, a, on Saturday mornings or evenings, but we do have at least one now post COVID um, during the school day. And so we have, because Typically, you know, historically we recruit from out of district as well, um, but those are open to all interested students. And so we, at every open house, whether it's during the day or outside of school hours, we've got a student panel, our ambassadors who, you know, tour families around the building, um, talk about the experiences, study tours, all that kind of stuff, and answer any questions that families have. And I'll also add to that here at PTEC, we facilitate the same most recently. Uh, yesterday, we had our recruitment event. Uh, so we have, uh, we're an intra-district, intra so only normal families uh, tend to attend our events, but um, I think we're at our third event uh, that families come. And of course, we have student ambassadors. Students actually run a few of the sessions for families, so they get a true insight as to what the, um, the student insight is about their school PTEC. And uh, Dr. Block, if uh, parents are looking for the where to get the information to uh, go to attend one of these, where would you? What would you say? It is on our website, and we do um, communicate with the middle schools as well, the middle school counselors, so they market it to their students when our events are, and families do sign up on our website, so we have an idea of who is coming, and our ambassadors play a part in the welcome and the registration of families. So it's a pretty involved event, but uh, we definitely publicize it. Enough, so I'm very, very happy to hear that. The more communication with parents, the better. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So our next new course proposals, Stacy Bergen is going to share, and they fall into more of the humanities realm. And I'm really excited for the first course. And I know that we're piloting, we hope to pilot it this year at Norwalk High and then expand it to Brian McMahon for next year. So go ahead, uh, Stacy. 
Hi, good evening. It's so good to be with you in collaboration tonight. Um, part of the work that the curriculum and instruction team has done is collaborate with the teachers in the NORA public school system in order to gain new and interesting ideas from um, their departments and the students. So Norwalk High this year has decided to put forth a course called the History of Norwalk. And it's a great course because it is looking at the settlement of Norwalk from 1651 up and through the 21st century city that we live in today. So we will be able to utilize the city and its many different um, interesting places and uh, artifacts to look at how do we get to a seaport village to a modern city in the lower half of Connecticut. So that's Norwalk High's. Uh, history of Norwalk cost, of course. In addition, in the arts program, as we continue at Norwalk High to build out the theater pathway, Lori Leibowitz, in collaboration with the music department, um, was able to come to the creation of two classes this year. One is called play production and the other is called technical theater and production. Play production is an extension of um, the theater within the theater arts pathway of the fall production into the spring production. So it allows students to collaborate with one another on an additional theater experience. Now the course technical theater and production is really looking at the business side of theater, looking at sort of the stage hand work, the setting work, um, and this will provide students a real world opportunity to learn what it is like to run a professional theater. So they're taking what they're learning in the arts, right, within the play class and then applying it to how would one run a theater. So we are very excited to offer these two courses, well, the three courses at Norwalk High School. Any questions on these three humanities focused courses? Hi, Stacey, it's Colin. I have a quick question. Just wanna say hi to everyone and um, say how pleased and honored I am to join the Curriculum and Instruction Committee. Um, Welcome. And, uh, yeah, thank you. And how pleased I am to see uh, these new courses. I'm curious about the history of Norwalk, just um, you know, without necessarily um, pulling the ent uh, this entire thread, but um, you know, I I'm curious about how a history course like this starting in 1651, will or can um, include in its lens a look at some of the first peoples who settled this land and um, you know and make sure that we're, we're telling the entire history? Yes, no, absolutely. Um, so when we're looking at the settlement of Norwalk, we will definitely um, involve as much as we can um, our, our local First Nation people who can give us some additional perspectives on what and hi historical perspectives as to what that um, looked like. So yes, those voices are very important to the development of this course because it is going to only reinforce, it will not only reinforce the state's requirement that the history of First Nation people be included throughout um, a child's K-12 educational experience in the state of Connecticut. Perfect. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Stacy. if I could just ask one more question on that. Sure. Um, I was so struck a couple years ago, uh, right by the walk bridge, um, that area had to be evacuated basically because uh, we're going to build a new walk bridge. And in the process, they discovered, uh, you may well know this, an archaeological dig um, that was explored by uh, archaeologists from Yukon. And I'm just hoping that that, uh, what has been found there regarding the early, early settlement of Norwalk is included. Mm -hmm. So one of the great things um, about the changes in the framework of uh, social studies within the state is that they are working in conjunction with Yukon. And actually on Friday, mm -hmm we have an update meeting. So I will have more information uh, regarding changes in social studies um, on Friday. 
Good. All right. Well, we're going to move on. And, you know, we're excited at these potential courses. So Stacey is also going to share, even though these are not new courses, it is a lot of work that our curricula team in collaboration with the business department has been working on throughout this year. So go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Rob, can I ask just one more uh, question about the courses? Sure. Sure. So um, when I first joined the board, there was a lot of emphasis by Dr. Adamowski about adding ASL as a language. And when I followed up, um, I know it was implemented at P-TECH, but there was hope of expanding it to the other high schools. I didn't see it today in the packet as an extension of the language um, courses. Is, can you just speak to that and you know, what the hope is for rollout? Well, our, our continued struggle is simply around finding qualified individuals. I know that P-TECH was able to find a, the what I would consider as a unicorn uh, that can able to teach that course. And so we are continuing to look for someone that could teach that course. And we would absolutely, a school could bring that in into their world language department as long as they can find someone. So right now it only is highlighted at P-TECH as a course offering because they have a certified individual to do that. So we will continue to look to expand uh, American Sign Language to our high schools, but I know that the biggest struggle is finding certified educators to teach that course. So it is a an active search though yeah. that we continue. Okay, yes. thank you. Absolutely. Okay. So um, the business departments at Norwalk High and at Brian McMahon and in conjunction with PTEC, um, we met at the end of last year and we realized that there needed to be some compacting of courses as we move towards a more cohesive alignment between all of the schools. We wanna make sure that classes weren't repetitive we wanted to make sure that students were um, able to collaborate across um, different courses so that when they left their pathways, they would be best prepared either for the world of employment or college. So what we had decided to do as a team is think about compacting the two courses called Exploring Careers and Exploring Entrepreneurship, because in theory, they were really very similar, almost so similar that you, you could go from one to the other and it was really a repeat. And so we decided we were gonna take what was best about each of those courses and then co compact them into one and calling it um, Discovering Careers. In addition, we're also revising course descriptions to reflect the work of both high schools. It's really important that we have consistent language across the district to ensure that kids are not receiving mixed messages um, and also are experiencing this similar types of learning. So we have, as a business department, decided to come up with a five-year plan that we have put together to roll out various stages of the revision to the business department work. So we are very pleased to present these revisions that need to take place as we continue to move the work forward in collaboration. Any questions? All right, we are going to transition now to PTEC and Dr. Black and Ms. Fanari, who are welcome to, they're going to share about their vision and their work at PTEC. Hey everyone, um, I'll take lead. Mrs. Fenar, feel free to jump in if I've uh, overlooked anything. I'd just like to begin with <clears throat> just an overall uh, sharing of um, general idea of what's been occurring that leads us to this point. Uh, we've been working with uh, two advisory boards, one being new, one pre-existing. Our pre-existing advisory board is our school governance council. And um, our, our staff and parents who have been a part of the School Governance Council have been working with us to identify our strengths um, that we continue to work towards enhancing, but also areas of need. 
Uh, we also have developed a new advisory board consisting of uh, business partners, and they're advising us in regard to our theme of technology and how we best prepare students with the requisite skills to enter um, a college program that is computer science driven, but also prepare students for uh, the career environment, <clears throat> excuse me, where they may choose to actually go to work, uh, not just to avoid college, but also help pay for college. So the, the two entities between the School Governance Council and our thematic advisory board has pretty much brought us to this point. <clears throat> now, as you all know, Norwalk Community College is our um, associate's degree uh, partner. They have uh, three pathways that our students enter once they graduate from us. Um, it's mobile programming, web development, and software engineering. To this end, we need to ensure that our computer science pathways here at P-TECH align so that we give kids, again, the requisite skills so that when they do enter this program at NCC, uh, not only will they be prepared and be successful, but of course, they will have uh, skills that uh, prepare them for careers that potentially do not exist. So with that said, um, you see the, the pathways laid out um, as they are network systems, uh, web and digital communications, programming and software development, skills build uh, that is um, really focused around the IBM partnership that P-TECH is a derivative or an outcome of. Um, there are courses within the skills build pathway that's already in the program of studies and that's primarily around our theme of workforce development. And then the individual studies um, pathway is for the unique students who may select courses in each of these uh, pathways and essentially build their own um, pathway, so to speak, towards uh, graduation. So that's the overall um, pathway presentation. As uh, we... Dr. Black, could oh, I yes. uh, just elaborate a little bit on our um... Uh, the, the skills build with yeah. IBM. Um, do IBM uh, personnel come to PTEC and give instruction or mentoring in any sort? What, what is the connection? Okay, so skills, IBM actually produces a, they have a platform that students can actually earn badges through. It's, it's actually a training platform. Um, so it's, it, it enables students to earn uh, badges and skills that actually gives them advantage when it comes to the internship competitive component, uh, which is a part of the opportunities here at P-TECH for students. However, from a course standpoint, uh, there are uh, workplace learning courses. There are three workplace learning courses um, that are really focused around the theme of um, um, workforce skill development where students learn what we call those soft skills, the communication, the collaboration, all those are uh, problem solving soft skills, so to speak, when you're in the workforce that they need to embrace. We're also looking to build in a bit of college readiness into that workplace learning course um, so that it prepares students for the college component as well. But really skills build is around you know, financial literacy, the cooperative work experience, um, the workplace components of our theme. Because again, P-TECH <clears throat> has a dual partnership. It's, it's, it's the IBM workforce lens, but also the college readiness technology uh, preparation lens as well. I see, thank you. So there are a few courses here, um, as you see laid out. Um, Accelerate actually came out of our School Governance Council. Part of the, the, the discussion and conversations uh, is around students really having in-depth Excel skills, not just the, the, the cursory entering data into cells, but actually you know, delving into functions and related sheets and all those things that are really utilized in the business environment. And um, the catchy name was developed Accelerate, uh, which reference, references that course. Um, the second one is out of our business department. It's really just the name adjustment, uh, which is, 
which actually differentiates it a bit from the Honors Entrepreneurship course. Uh, Money-wise, uh, it's a combination of financial literacy and investments. Uh, we really wanted to present a course where students are not only learning about the checkbooks and the, 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 the specific things about you know, financial literacy for um, the, the personal finance at home, but also we do a lot more personal finance in regard to investments and such at home as well. So we're merging it to create a comprehend, comprehensive financial literacy um, course for students, which of course could lend itself to the business world um, as well. Tails. Um, I'll need to explain tails. You'll see tails at the end of a few of our courses. Microsoft has a has a this program called Tails, which stands for Technology Education and Learning Support. <laughs> Teals, the Tails program provides um, free curriculum, um, but it also comes with a professional, an expert in the computer science field, which will pretty much be the expert partner for the teacher who may need support to teach the computer science skills. So for example, when we would run our computer, I'm sorry, that cybersecurity course, um, our teacher may have basic skills around computers, um, computer cybersecurity. However, um, the TEALS program provides a expert professional in, in cybersecurity so the teacher brings the pedagogical knowledge, the professional brings that um, um, technical skill knowledge, and then they work together to build capacity within the teacher to eventually step away. So the whole idea of TEALS is to provide a support system for, let's keep in mind, a lot of our certified teachers really don't get a lot of in-depth computer science training, so to speak. So the TEALS program supplements that with a professional help. So in a way, Teals is like a, a, a coach for the teachers. 100% and, well said. And if you could, um, the source of, of how do we get the Teals expert? Uh, is it a volunteer basis or is it, uh, how do we get so, that? Right. So I met with Teals. They are an, an entity and they actually provide this support free to us so far. Um, I'm not sure if that will change in the future, but at this point in time, we're taking advantage of um, our partnership with Teals to get free curricula and free, um, I would say, professional development support for staff. Uh -huh. is, is that, is Teals related to the federal government or to IBM? Microsoft. Yes, with it's a Microsoft, Microsoft program. So, so it's, it's sort of an outreach from my, Microsoft. Yes, it's actually the designed. Yes, I'll, I'll read a, a description of the program. No, that sounds good. I think I'm yes. following it. I'll just read it briefly. The Technology Education and Learning Support Program partners with high schools to build teacher capacity and student interest in computer science with the goal of enabling schools to sustain equitable computer science program on their own. So that's the, the summative um, Microsoft uh, goal around teams. Sounds excellent. Right. And uh, of course, artificial intelligence, as we all know, computers um, thinking on their own. Uh, we, we created this course around data science, machine learning, and AI. And uh, hopefully kids will be excited about that course um, to kind of uh, go into the logic around um, not just computer science, but how we can get um, um, technology to develop its own logical processes through such a course. And uh, AP Computer Science, it's a course that exists through uh, multiple avenues, but of course we're leveraging teams again for um, curricula and support. Uh, th this continues with the TEALS offering. And next would be uh, multimedia journalism as a core English course. Um, this is pretty much where students will be able to um, learn, I would say ELA skills through their core English class, but actually be able to present it in different ways. So uh, part of the idea is we have these computer science skills that kids will be learning in their technical courses. We want these to transition into our other courses 
courses as well. So students are not learning these skills in isolation. They get opportunities to expand and apply these skills in other courses. So one of these examples, for example, if a child is, is uh, producing, um, let's say a persuasive um, or an informational journal about a topic, they can potentially leverage their um, uh, programming skills or web design skills to present that content from a technical lens as well. So we want to create courses that really give that um, either video component, website component, just a media uh, plethora of options where they will learn core skills um, from the, the English language lens, but then have the ability to demonstrate that through video or other forms of media. And last but not least, computer ethics is a social studies course. I do believe that computer ethics should be a part of just about every technical course, so to speak. But nonetheless, this course really delves into students understanding the social impacts um, and, and all the, 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 the components of considering um, computer in our society and how it does help, but also the, the, the pieces that we need to consider to to combat the negatives that may be associated with that. Any questions? Dr. Black, I just, it's Colin. I just, I want to say, it's, it's, it's great hearing the description of all these courses. They sound like uh, something that I could, I could learn from in, in, in all cases. Um, and something just occurred to me uh, from the previous page, um, only because um, I know with my own students, um, Microsoft Excel it, it has now been joined by a suite of so many other spreadsheet applications. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not sure how that that translates to the the corporate and business world, but certainly I think um, those kinds of software applications are evolving. And I wonder, in this beautifully named course, Accelerate if it's going to include um, other kinds of spreadsheet applications and not just Excel, or is it, um, is it great really point. Great point. So when, when I did my master's degree in computer science and information technology, truth be told, it's really about not the application, but the skills that you are able to acquire and the, the, consideration of options that exist within a platform that you can apply to other platforms. So when kids learn about functions and um, um, being able to, 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 to apply uh, functions and then generate spreadsheets from that, they may do that primarily in Excel, but it's we never want to teach kids that these skills are limited to one particular application or one particular platform. Same thing when, a, you know, someone learns to code, for example, in Java. Yes, you may have certain syntactical things that you need to follow, but we also want to teach kids that there are other syntax in other languages. We just need you to understand that there are syntactical limitations when you're working with a certain language. So we just need to be aware of the difference in other languages. So when you do learn that language, you're just learning the nuances that enable you to leverage that language versus another. So I would never want to say Excel is a primary. I would say the skill sets within Excel will, ex will enable them to leverage those skill sets in other applications that have spreadsheet capability. Mm -hmm. We always want to have an open mind, not necessarily an application, because technology changes so fast. It's really about getting those um, that, that open mind in regard to problem solving and and the requisite skills. Um, uh, we may learn them in a certain platform, but we definitely want to expand that opportunity. Great. Well, that's excellent to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Good going, Colin. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And then our last uh, update to the program of study is really adding in the future ready programs. And we have the administrator, Sarah Zawowski and Ralph, who will be sharing a little bit about these programs. And then one of the new courses, Carol Wilshire Toth will is excited to share for next year, this course that will be offered across the district. So Sarah, the floor is yours. 
Great. Thank you, Rob. Uh, so we're uh, we're just really excited to be included in the uh, program of studies for next school year. And uh, we just want to walk you kind of through, you know, future ready programs, uh, mission and vision. So really, um, where our programs are here to offer equitable access uh, to high quality individualized education. Uh, and we use, you know, a variety of ways to get that instruction to our students. So, you know, we have our direct instruction in person. We have that also um, virtually with Virtual Academy, uh, as well as other distance learning technologies. Uh, we primarily serve students in grades 11 and 12. Uh, we offer flexibility with time and location. Um, and really the biggest takeaway from Future Ready is that it's customization for the students, right? Um, every student in our program, they have their own personal pathway uh, towards meeting graduation requirements and they get to um, go through our program and graduate with their um, comprehensive school of record. Uh, we, we have uh, supports that are able to, where we're able to re-engage students uh, who may be undercredited or overaged, as well as those that just need that smaller um, learning environment. And uh, we have embedded online learning across um, all of our programs, which really has enabled our students to be agents um, of their own learning. Uh, so within Future Ready, we have Twilight Academy as well as Virtual Academy. So uh, Twilight, uh, we are in our third year now for Twilight, and um, with that program, we're serving our overage, undercredited 11th and 12th grade uh, high school students. Uh, they We have classes from 4 to 8 p.m., and our uh, mission is to re-engage those youth uh, through wraparound services in a small, supportive classroom environment. Uh, you, with our evening hours, our students primarily have commitments during the day, such as child care. Many, um, if not all, have jobs, which has prevented them from finishing high school through their school of origin. Uh, our courses are uh, conducted in person. We have um, an asynchronous day every week where then our students have uh, scheduled appointments with teachers to um, check in and catch up uh, on work. And it's um, an opportunity for these students to um, be a part of a smaller community with peers who have similar, um, who are in similar situations as, as they are. Uh, virtual Academy. So for next year, um, we're going to open this 10th through 12th grade students for virtual classes. Uh, it's a lab setting for original credit or credit recovery. Uh, as with Twilight, the students are in small groups. It's personalized instruction. Uh, the courses are grounded in problem-based learning. And um, it's just as in-person instruction, but it is virtually. So, you know, we have four blocks. They have classes. Um, there's academic support. We have social emotional support. And we also um, are planning field trips and just in-person events for our virtual academy. Oh, and just um, if, you know, the students in our program, they do have the um, opportunity to be in both programs. So uh, virtual kids, if they would prefer to take a health class or PE class in person, they can come to Twilight and Twilight can take classes in Virtual Academy if it fits their schedule. Um, so for our courses, we really focus on um, the core courses. We um, offer all the English courses, the senior electives, um, referred to the course offerings at Norlock High School and Brian McMahon. Uh, we have an array of social studies courses, mathematics, science, um, computer applications, world language, and we are also um, providing capstone for our students. Uh, Sarah, what, what's the uh, population of the Twilight this year? Uh, so currently we have a practice Approximately uh, 40 students enrolled. That's that's an increase, definitely. Yes, yeah, it is. Uh, so, um, you know, it's just a, it's a great group of kids. And we have approximately um, 30 enrolled for Virtual Academy as well. So it's really, it's a growing program. And that's wonderful to create uh, and, and work for uh, opportunities for these children who have certain obstacles in uh, their life path that that might um, have not given them the chance to graduate from high school. And this does it in, in a 
a creative way. Very, very proud of this. All right, and Carol, would you like to talk about the new course offering? Yes, so uh, thank you. We are really excited to introduce our Certified Nursing Assistant Pilot Program, which will begin this spring. Um, it will be offered to um, two of our future uh, readiness programs that Sarah just mentioned, um, to the Twilight Academy Scholars and also our Virtual Academy Scholars as well. Um, scheduling priority will be given to seniors and then to juniors. And what's really exciting about this Certified Nursing Assistant Program is that this is a vision that has come together from MPS leadership in collaboration with Norwalk Community College and also Norwalk Hospital. And this is going to bring um, an opportunity for our scholars um, in the programs to um, earn a 0.5 STEM credit upon course completion. Um, but it's also gonna allow for our seniors uh, that are in the program to earn a workforce development certification. And that certification will allow them to work hand in hand with Norwalk Hospital um, prior to graduation and just around the time of graduation for job placement. And when we think of Norwalk Hospital, we really should think of Nubon's Health. We should think about all of the opportunities, um, assisted living facilities, the hospitals, um, even um, you know, medical offices. And so it's really limitless as to um, where our scholars can go in terms of job placement uh, once they've had an opportunity to finish this course, which will also include um, rounds in the hospital, um, working with hospital staff. And so it's really um, an exciting program that we are so excited to uh, pilot this semester. And that is our request for new courses in the program of study. I do wanna just take a minute. This program of study started in November where our department heads work with their teams and then our curricula team works with the department heads and then they bring all of their courses to a, the central office meeting where we talk about these courses and the impact that it has. And so it's a really two month process. And the I wanna thank the principal, principals, high school department chairs, counselors, the curriculum and instruction team, assistant principals, the MLL specialized learning team. But four people I really wanna just give a shout out to is Kyle Heeslip, could not do it without him. Deb Costello from P-TECH this year was integral in the process. Shirley Ethier from Brian McMahon and Jen Sfiro from uh, CGS. So I just, I needed to really talk about the team and the amount of work that goes into this process. And we're, we're really excited to share our new course proposals and the work that has happened for our students. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. And Rob, can I ask one more question? Mary Ellen, can I ask one more question? Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Can we Could have you? provide an update on there's another area of obviously shortage in teachers and how we are building out pathways for teachers that um, could help reintroduce staff into the system. And and so Carol is actually part of that team that is mm -hmm. working on that. So Carol, would you like to provide a little update? Sure, absolutely. One of the things that we're doing and have started this year is we've embedded an education internship to really speak to students' passions and desires to work with children and students. And the beauty of the education internship is that um, as our scholars in the internship take to it, they're able to then um, upon graduation begin to study to be, for example, a paraprofessional and to receive those credentials. Um, one of the, also, one, uh, another thing that we're also doing in that realm is for example, we have an upcoming workforce development career fair in March. And so having, um, our Nora Public Schools human resources at the table um, with our scholars and families being able to, um, you know, recruit and really showcase the, the openings we have and availabilities. I think those two uh, pieces are important to speak about. So the education internship is, is one way in which we're working on that. Um, and also through um, NPS um, human resources recruiting as well. Thank you. Good question, Erica. Rob, could we come back to the 
uh, seeing everyone's face. Absolutely. I'd like to thank all of those that contributed today. Really, what a yeoman's task to get our high school kids in position to graduate and um, be part of the world. Oh, Sherelle Harris, I'm so good to see you. I'm sorry I didn't introduce you before. Um, we wanna thank you for all the work you do. Um, I appreciate my Board of Ed uh, folks coming, Erica, uh, Colin, and Sherelle. Um, and thank you for uh, all the work you've done, uh, all the, all the uh, educators and uh, Rob Pennington. This has been an uh, Ellen, amazing sorry. evening. Before we break, um, does this require a vote from the committee or is it, um, yeah. So no, 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 well, no. I, I think that it eventually will go to the full board. Okay, do we need to vote to send it to the board? Not. It, uh, yes, a motion to, to send it <laughs> yes. to the board, yes. Okay, Absolutely. Colin? I make that motion to approve these uh, this program of study. All those in favor, raise your hand, say aye. Okay, that's everybody. Good, thank you. Thanks for bringing that up, Colin. I appreciate it. And we will uh, bring that to, to the Board of Ed for their consideration. Thank you, everybody. Good yeah. night. Do we have a motion to dismiss? Oh, we need a motion to dismiss. So yeah. motion. motion to adjourn. Yeah, yeah that's motion correct. To adjourn. <laughs> Cheryl, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good night, thank everybody. Thank Good night. You.